Hi, this is Rob Froney, and I'm here to explain how an adaptive FIR filter works. This is an adaptive FIR filter. Here we have an FIR filter with adjustable coefficients, h sub n of k. The n refers to the uh, iteration you're on, and every FIR filter has a number of coefficients, and k um, indexes over those coefficients. We have an input, x of n, going into the filter, and an output, d hat of n. We have a desired output, d of n, that comes into the uh, whole adaptive filter system. And the difference between d of n and d hat of n is the e of n, or error of n. And that error is fed into a coefficient adjustment algorithm along with the input to uh, give us a change in filter coefficients for the next iteration. This change is delta h sub n of k. So the uh, next filter coefficients h sub n plus 1 of k will equal h sub n of k plus delta h sub n of k. Now, as an application of this, we could make a uh, an adaptive FIR filter that will adjust the coefficients here to mimic a, another filter. So suppose we have a, uh, another filter here with unknown coefficients. I'm just going to call this filter, it's an FIR filter as well, H unknown of K. Those are the coefficients for this unknown filter. And if we run that filter, into this um, desired output d of n, then what happens is, uh, if everything's working right, this uh, desired output and the uh, actual output of the FIR filter will converge to be the same, which will make the h sub n of k converge to the h sub unknown of k. So now the question is, how in the world do we change or do we compute the h sub unknown of k? In other words, what's a good uh, coefficient adjustment algorithm? How could we do that? Well, I would like to suggest that we might want to minimize the error squared, e squared of n. The reason we want error squared is that it's much easier to minimize uh, error squared than it is the absolute value of error because the derivative of the absolute value of error doesn't exist right at the place where the minimum is. And the other reason is that, of course, we don't want to just minimize the error, otherwise it would go to minus infinity and these two would not converge. So what we'd like to do is minimize e squared of n. So let me graph you uh, 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 what e squared of n might look like in the situation where we only have two coefficients. Here's the first coefficient, h sub n of 0, and here's the second coefficient, h sub n of 1. So this is a two coefficient thing. Um, two coefficient filter. So what we'd like to do is if we graph this, we could make a, a contour plot right here. And uh, these are contours of uh, equal value of e of e squared of n. And maybe this point right down here might be a hole. In other words, that's a minimum of e squared of n. So perhaps we were, we were somewhere on one of these contour lines. What we'd really want to do is we're trying to get to that hole. And if all we can do is look right around this point where uh, we are, we could look at the derivatives there, and we could tell that the best way to go would be perpendicular to the contour line in the direction down. Now that's what we call the method of steepest descent. So uh, in order to do that, what we want to do is go along 
the uh, direction of the gradient, actually minus the direction of the gradient, to go in the steepest descent. So what that means is that uh, we could write delta h sub n of k like this. We could say it was equal to mu. That's going to be uh, a thing that we'll, we'll, a parameter we'll use to adjust our step size. And then times the, the rate of change, uh, that's the partial of e squared of n with respect to the h sub n of k. And, and we do that for k equals, uh, k equals 0 and k equals 1 in this case. And I need it to go negative, so I'm going to put a minus there. I want to go toward the, the uh, minimum. So now the question becomes, what is the e squared of n? And how does it relate to the h sub n of k? Well, if you look at our picture up here, you will see that e of n is the difference between uh, d of n and, and d hat of n. So let me write over here, e of n equals d of n minus d hat of n. And so uh, now what we'd like to do is we'd like to try and figure out what is d hat of n in terms of the h sub n of k's. Because you see, d of n doesn't depend on the h sub n of k's, only d hat here. And d hat is, is uh, just the convolution between the input eight xn and the h sub n of k's. So d hat of n will equal the summation um, uh, from k equals 0 up to n minus 1, where n is the number of k's, uh, I mean number of uh, coefficients. So uh, um, this is n equals 2, basically, for our case. So, um, so we'd go from k equals 0 and k equals 1. That's this direction and that direction. Um, then we want to do the convolution, and the convolution is just uh, h sub n of k multiplied by x of n minus k. So now let's do this derivative over here. So this derivative is equal to minus mu, and then we'll do the derivative. The derivative is 2 e of n times the partial of e of n with respect to h sub n of k. We're using the chain rule here. Now if you look at the partial of e of n with respect to h sub n of k, that equals the partial of d hat of n with respect to h sub n of k. And in order to do the derivative here, you will notice if I'm taking the derivative with respect to, the, to h sub n of 0, then the only term that matters is the k equals 0 term. So I would only get the k equals 0 term. If it was with respect to h sub n of 1, I would only get the k equals 1 term. And you can see that the, the partial of d hat of n with respect to h sub n of k is just this term right here, x of n minus k, just that factor right there. So we can then write this delta h sub n of k like this. It's minus mu times 2 times e of n times uh, x of n minus k. And if you look up here at our coefficient adjustment, we get e of n, so we can just plug that in right there. And we get x of, n, x of n here, so we can just plug in x of n minus k and get all these delta of n, uh, delta h sub n uh, of, of k. You can get all the, the changes here, and then we can get the new, uh, new coefficients for the next iteration. So that, my friends, is uh, how an adaptive FIR filter works, a very simple one.